calling the Committee on Human Services, um, 3 p.m. calendar on February 16, 2021. Present uh, in my committee are, are in the room is Senator Bennett Misalucha. On conference, I see Senator Laura Ocasio. And um, later on, we, I expect my other committee members to be joining me. But moving on, we have, please note that we're asking testifiers to keep their video off until it's your turn to testify. Um, if your video setting, settings are set to hide non-video participants, please, I, I am to refer to the participant list. When it's your turn, please turn on your video when testifying. If, um, in the event we need to reconvene this hearing, the next hearing is going to be on Thursday, February 18th at 3 p.m. We are experiencing technical issues and we're going to do our best to um, expedite this or try to keep your testimony within two minutes and uh, so that we would be able to move along with the testimony. I thought there was more. Okay, and um, although we will be following the agenda, because we have a number of video participants who are in the deaf-blind task force, we will, I will be announcing my decision-making recommendations um, for SB 534, SB 537, SB 538 as soon as the testimony of SB 538 is heard. Because we don't have all the committee members here, we will not be doing the decision-making until the end of the agenda, but at least um, Participants who are interested in those bills will know what the chair's recommendations are going to be. Okay, seeing nothing further, we're going to start off with SB 192 relating to public assistance, allows the Department of Human Services to administer and provide public assistance to eligible residents of the state during a governor declared state of emergency. First up, Department of Human Services, BESDI, um, in support or comments. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and good afternoon, uh, committee members. Uh, my name is Brian Donahoe. I'm the administrator for BESDI, the Benefit Employment and Support Services Division. Also, I hope on the line is Scott Nakasoni, who's the assistant administrator. Good to see you this afternoon, Chair. Um, yeah, we stand on our written testimony and uh, we would like to provide some uh, some additional comments or remain available on the line should you have any additional uh, questions there. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, Hawaii Primary Care Association in support. Um, and no one else having registered to testify on SB 192. The only other written testimony we have is from Olivia De, De Quiros. Um, in support. Members, any questions of Human Services Besti, um, Brian Donahoe on SB 192? Okay, seeing none, we're moving on. SB 534, relating to electronic transmission of ballots, uh, provides that a voter with special needs shall be provided a means of electronic authentication of an electronic transmission of, of replacement ballot that does not include the voter's handwritten signature or a waiver of secrecy. First up, uh, Office of Elections in support. We'll stand on our written testimony in support and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. Next up, DCAP, Disability and Communications Access Board in support. Okay. Next up, Common Cause with comments. I see Sandy Ma. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Um, it is with um, 
uh, with great regret that we raised some concerns with this bill. We have concerns with the security of the voted ballot when it is being returned by electronic means. Um, we want everyone's vote to be counted, and we provided some suggestions as to how um, uh, ballots can be returned securely. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, National Feder Federation of the Blind of Hawaii and support. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chairman, this is James Gashel and testifying on behalf of National Federation of the Blind of Hawaii. We're very much in support of this uh, bill and, and um, glad to have the support of the DCAB and the Office of Elections and comments from Common Cause. Um, let me just say that this bill makes two important changes, one of which is to eliminate the requirement for a handwritten signature and move to electronic means of authentication, and the other change is to discontinue having the voter with special needs sign a waiver of secrecy. Five other states have uh, done this already, um, and uh, I put these states in my, um, in my testimony. They are... Um, Maine, Massachusetts, Nevada, North Carolina, and West Virginia. There are systems out there that enable returning a ballot securely. And um, I think rather than having the legislature try to define an electronic means of authentication, it would be better to have the Office of Elections take this on and probably uh, find a vendor that serves these other states it can be done, and we ask you to pass um, uh, this bill. Thank you. Mahalo very much. Bless. Okay, thank you very much. Um, no one else having registered to testify in SB 534, those who have provided written testimony are Carolyn Kunitake with comments, Edward Hanel, in opposition, David Anderson with comments. Um, one, two, three, four. Six other individuals in opposition and two individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 534? Okay, questions, committee members on SB 534. Okay, seeing none, moving on. On SB 537, um, excuse me, relating to American Sign Languages, language, recognizes American Sign Language as a fully developed autonomous natural language with its own grammar, syntax, vocabulary, and cultural heritage. First up, no one having registered for SB 537 to testify, those who have provided written testimony are DCAB, Disability and Communications Access Board in support, Civil Rights Commission in support, Hawaii Disability Rights Center in support, and four other individuals um, providing support. Anybody wishing to testify on SB 537? Recognizing American Sign Language. Okay. Um, seeing none, nobody having to testify. Any, any questions, committee members? Okay, seeing none, moving on. SB 538 clarifies the meaning of program or activity receiving state financial ex assistance, excludes cases within the scope of the individuals with disabilities Education Act from the jurisdiction of the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. First up, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission in support, Robin Wurzel. Yes, uh, we, the Civil Rights Commission, um, sorry, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. The Civil Rights Commission stands in strong support and stands uh, on our written testimony, and we are available for questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, seeing no one else having registered to testify, those providing written testimony are DCAB in support, Hawaii Disability Rights Center in support, and three other, um, one other individual in support, and two other individuals with comments. 
Questions, committee members on SB 538. Okay, seeing none. And as announced earlier, because of to because of the people watching um, in the Deaf Blind Task Force, I am going to announce my decision making recommendations. Um, but leave decision making until the very end. So for SB 534, Chair's um, recommendation is due to common cause and Office of Election security concerns and request for definition of electronic communication, I'm going to pass an SD1 allowing the Office of Elections to still require signatures or waiver of sequence secrecy and thus amend pages 3 lines 8 and part of 10 lines 12 to 13. I note that we're going to move it's going to be moving on to judiciary who is also the main the primary introducer the chair of whom is the primary introducer and hopefully he can fix the common cause and office of elections concerns with it. As to SB 537 and SB 538, my recommendations are going to be to pass as is. Okay. For those wishing to find out, um, to leave, you can do so now. Otherwise, we're moving on to SB 597. SB 597, relating to campaign finance, allows candidates seeking election to use campaign funds for child care costs under certain conditions. First up, common cause in support, Sandy. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. We support SB 597. We also suggest broadening this bill to include the care of a candidate's other vital household dependents, such as family members living with the candidate uh, who are physically or mentally incapable of self-care. Um, that will allow this bill to um, uh, be more evergreen. If you have any other questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. No one else having registered to testify in SB 597. Those providing written testimony were all in support. <clears throat> That's AAUW and one, two, three, and seven other individuals um, in support. Questions, members, for Sandy Ma, seeing none, moving on. SB 608, relating to general tax, excise tax exemptions, establishes a general excise tax exemption for the gross proceeds or income from the sale of groceries that are eligible under the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program or Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for women, infants, and children, regardless of the means of purchase and the program eligibility of the purchaser. Establishes a general excise tax exemption for the gross proceeds or income from the sale of non-prescription drugs. Okay, first up, Department of Taxation, comments. Hello, hello, Chair. Um, we have just a couple of comments. First, uh, if you could just, uh, in our testimony, we, we ask you to redefine eligible foods. Yeah. And we do have the site in our testimony. Uh, my second comment is um, the general fund impact of this particular bill for the first year, which is a half year, is $92.3 million. For fiscal year 23, $228.4 million. For 24, $234.0 million. For 25, $239.5 million. For 26, $244.2 million. And for 27, $248.8 million. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, um, Department of Human Services, Bestie, with comments. Ryan. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, Brian Donahoe with BESB. Um, we, we stand on our written testimony as submitted um, and appreciate the intent of the bill. I, I would add, though, that I, I, uh, as you can read in the testimony, 
the preamble describes that there's um, no general excise tax charged on eligible food purchases under SNAP. And while we appreciate the intent of the bill, we, we believe that the proposed provisions may be unnecessary. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, Scott Nakasone, Department of Human Services, comments. Okay, next up, um, Laura Zerbel, Hawaii Food Industry Association in support. Hi, Chair, this is Alexis Chapman for HFIA. Um, thank you for the opportunity to testify. We're in strong support of this measure, and I just wanna highlight a couple points from our testimony. The economic crisis caused by the pandemic has hit Hawaii harder than any other state. Uh, we have the highest cost of living of any state, and we are one of the only states where residents pay taxes on their groceries. Uh, most states recognize that taxing groceries is regressive and disproportionately impacts lower income families. Food is a major expense for Hawaii families, even and especially lower income families. According to 2019 USDA data, a thrifty food plan for a family of four in Hawaii is $1,176 a month. The national average for the same plan for the same period was $654. So that's almost double. This means, uh, this numbers also mean that even though thrifty families are likely spending more on grocery taxes every year than they're getting back from the food excise tax credit. So the tax credit helps, but it's not a solution. Hawaii's high cost of living is a constant topic of conversation, and every year we see a lot of bills that try and express one segment of that or another, but this bill is a comprehensive solution that would really make it cheaper to live in Hawaii as soon as it's implemented. Um, exempting from groceries from the GET makes sense, and we urge you to pass this measure. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up. Um, Oh, no one else having registered to testify on SB 608. Those providing written comments are Maui Chamber of Commerce in support, ILWU in support, IOTSI Local 665 in support, UFCW 480 in support, HGA in opposition, Hawaii Teamsters in support, and an individual in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 608? Okay, seeing none. Questions, members? Okay, Senator Ihara. Did I hear, is it Human Services? Um, someone, a gentleman said that uh, the GET is not charged for purchases uh, made through the SNAP program. Is that, did I hear right? Brian Donahoe. Please answer, I, Senator Ihara. You bet, Senator Ihara, thank you so much for the question. The specifics on the program are probably best answered by my policy guru, Scott Nakasone. I'd like to invite him on to, to speak if possible. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, yes, as far as uh, the SNAP program goes, uh, federal law prohibits uh, tax from being charged on, on SNAP purchases. So, uh, HFIA, um, did you know that, or do you yes. disagree with that? Is that a fact in your mind? Yes, I, I, my understanding is the same, that SNAP purchases are not eligible for, uh, are not charged for taxes. So, uh, so what would this bill then do? Would it include so, something other than SNAP? My understanding is that this measure exempts SNAP eligible groceries, who, SNAP which are purchased eligible. by any. So the SNAP eligibility is just a means of designating okay. which type of food items are exempted. I got it. Okay. So if this, I understand correctly. It's only for the designation. So it, yeah, whether you so. are a SNAP person or not, you, okay. So this is a, in effect a food, G, a food uh, exemption. Yeah, it's yes. interesting, uh, clever way to do this. The, yes, the SNAP eligibility is very helpful because those items are already um, flagged by grocers for, and so they can, it's very easy sure. for them to wow. take off That's the PAT. Good. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, any other questions, um, committee members? So I have a question for Isaac. Choi, are you still there? Department of Taxation, DOTAX. Hi, Isaac. Hey, how are you? Doing good. So, um, 
my question is, did you hear Department of Human Services saying that it's basically exempt already? So how did you come up with the figures of 92.2 million and all those others that we're going to lose money on? Yes, so, so the, the Department of Human Services is correct that SNAP is already exempt from GP tax. Okay, so didn't you testify that you listed a whole bunch of money that's not in your written testimony that right. we're going to so lose? I scored the bill for you. Would you like me to repeat it? Uh, no. Could, could you okay. supplement your written testimony as to those figures you came up with? I yes, I can, I can fax uh, or email the, the numbers to you right away. Okay. So, but basically, can you round it up? Can you just do a fast addition? How much money, if, if in fact it's not... Um, $230 million average. $230 million is how much we're going to lose? About, on the average, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Isaac. Any other questions, committee members? Okay, seeing none, uh, moving on. SB 886, uh, relating to speedy trials, creates a statutory right of victims and witnesses of sexual offenses under Part 5 of Chapter 707 HRS to a speedy trial in criminal cases involving adult defendants requires the court and the prosecution to take appropriate action to ensure a prompt trial in order to minimize the length of time a child abuse victim or minor witness must endure the stress of the child's involvement in the proceedings. Okay, first up, Office of the Public Defender in opposition. Next up, um, an individual in support, Maria, Maria Roth Teheran. Maria, are you there? I am here. Okay. We're finally okay. hearing your bill. Okay, so there is a valid reason why many jurisdictions, including our sister state, California, grant victims the right to a speedy trial. Children especially need this protection as undue delays in trial exacerbate traumatizing memories and prolong the healing process by creating more anxiety for the victim. This type of exposure to chronic stress changes the child's brain chemistry brain anatomy, and even alters gene expression. Since many studies have proven indefinitely that this long-term exposure to stress weakens the architecture of the developing brain, leading to lifelong problems in learning, behavior, physical, and mental health, I urge you not to condemn the children of your own constituent to this torment. Vote with your conscience and stand up to this often used tactic of bullying on the victims and their family by unscrupulous defense attorney. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, anybody, um, no one else having registered to vote to testify? Um, office, that is office. Oh, Chair, when I'm sure you got um, I, I submitted testimony on this matter. I'm sorry, um, didn't I? Les Hayakawa, please. I Testify. Thank you. I thought I Good called afternoon. your name. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Lee Hayakawa. I am the Assistant Public Defender. Um, the Office of the Public Defender respectfully opposes SB 886. Um, while we recognize that it is a, a well-intentioned um, measure, uh, we, uh, being in court on a daily basis, we expect that there are going to be several uh, a variety of problems in implementing something like a speedy trial uh, right for a victim and or a witness. Um, other than that, I, I will stand on my testimony, on the written testimony, and I'm available for questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, nobody else having registered to, um, to testify on SB 886. Those providing testimony are Michael Galoya's Senior Rainbow Family 808 in support, family, Hawaii Family Advocacy Team in support, one, two, three, four, five other individuals, 
testifying in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 886? Okay, questions? Members? Okay, seeing none, we're moving on. SB 913, relating to sustainable electronics management, requires persons who receive state fund and state financial assistance to donate unnecessary but functioning electronic devices, hardware, and televisions to nonprofit organizations that will refurbish and distribute them to eligible persons in the state. Sets reporting requirements for donating entities, nonprofit refurbishers, and the Department of Accounting General Services sets penalties for violations. First up, um, State of Hawaii, Department of Education, comments. Okay, next up, DAGS, Department of Accounting and General Services, comments. Next what? Hawaiianhope.org in support. Hawaiian Hope? Hello, Chair. Sure. Okay, your yes, turn. This, this is Curtis with uh, Hawaiian Hope. I'm the executive director of the nonprofit organization. Uh, we stand in strong support of the bill. Uh, the main intent of this bill is to get computer equipment that is otherwise uh, typically headed for e waste disposal. Um, back into the hands of the community and to get them to the, the, the people who need the equipment. Um, this is a, the, the intent of this has uh, been highlighted by the whole uh, coronavirus pandemic where so many people were told to go and do school from home and work from home. Um, however, tens of thousands of people don't have access to a computer at home. Uh, that is the main intent of this bill, is to make sure that the equipment that has already been bought, paid for, um, and is still usable, um, makes it back into the hands of people who can actually use it. Um, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to read the testimony from both uh, DOE and DAGS and appreciate their support and comments in the matter. Um, and I would like to make a comment following up with DAGS' concern about security and system integrity. Um, as I stated, we've been doing this for 14 years now, and we have basically the same primary concern of security and data, uh, data integrity. Uh, we install antivirus software on the computers and to protect the end users. Uh, software is the same that we have installed in our internet cafes. Um, one of our facilities, as an example, had 15,000 visitors through the front door in a matter of five months, and during that time, we had zero installation or zero um, infections of antivirus or, or viruses, sorry, in the, uh, in the facility. <clears throat> um, so this is something that we do address and uh, um, I'm sure that we can also train others to do the same. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, nobody else having um, registered to testify or somebody else that I didn't call? Okay, no, I have here. Hillary Apana um, okay. registered. Honey. Is I Hillary Apana for SB 913? I pressed on this video. Good afternoon, chair and members of the committee. On behalf of Superintendent Kishimoto, we stand on our written testimony, respectfully offering comments to add language to ensure that any content that may be inappropriate to minors be removed from the devices. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Audrey Hidano for Department of Accounting and General Services. Oh. Wait, Tony, Tony. Mm. Stop my video. Okay, let's mute. Account. If you're not testifying, please mute your mic. Thank you. Uh, Department of Accounting and General Services. Okay. Hi, Chair. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Could you turn on your video? I'm, I'm trying. I'm sorry. Technically, hang on. I'm sorry. Okay, you can testify. We've got your written um, comments. Chair, I'm sorry. This is um, Audrey Down at the deputy. I'm having problems. One second, my... Um... You, you can testify by audio because I expect the last bill is going to have 20 million okay. people testifying. So Okay, so I'm testifying on um, 
Senate Bill 913, I'm sorry I'm late, uh, Chair and Vice Chair, Audrey Downer, Deputy. The Department of Accounting and General Services appreciates the intent to leverage unused and data technology that will be recycled and refurbished. We encourage the collaboration between the state and nonprofits to come out with a plan that will maximize reuse of equipment that can benefit the public and underserved. The DAGS would like to offer the following comments. DAGS has concerns how nonprofits will sustain funding for this positive initiative as upgrading data hardware technologies will also evolve keeping current software and other security protection updated to mitigate data breaches as was previously mentioned and maintain systems in integrity. Liability of providing old technology that cannot support current data security software is of concern. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and I'm sorry I'm messing up. Okay, thank you. Okay, nobody else having um, registered to testify. Those who are oh, provided. I'm concentrating so much on this. Can someone mute whoever isn't testifying? Okay, thank you. Um, zero Waste of Oahu in support, and we have five other individuals in support and one individual with comment. Questions, members? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on. For SB 1127, making an emergency appropriation for Department of Human Services from the general revenue of the state of Hawaii for fiscal year 2020 to 2021 to address the budget shortfall for the general support for the general assistance program, which is um, code HMS 204 in the Department of Human Services, effective upon approval. First up, Department of Human Services in support. Chair, Assemblyman Ventura, Brian Donahoe on behalf of the department, Vice Chair and committee members, Yes, DHS strongly supports the administrative bill. We'll be available for any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Governor's Coordinator on Homelessness and Support, Scott. Oh, good afternoon, Chair. Um, stand on my written testimony in strong support. And just note that many homeless individuals rely on the GA benefit to meet basic needs. And having been a social worker the last time these benefits were reduced, I can attest to how disruptive it is for this population. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, um, nobody else having registered to testify. Those providing written testimony are Catholic Charities of Hawaii in support and Hawaii Primary Care Association in support. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 1127? Questions? I have a Se question, Chair. Senator Misalucha. This is for Scott. So um, I realize that we are in dire need for this, but I'm wondering whether there is a mechanism by which, I know that uh, there's conversations on the federal side that uh, they're considering additional help for the states. Would there be a mechanism by which we can get reimbursed for this emergency funding if perchance the federal funds come through? Thank, thank you, um, Senator Ms. Luca. I, I would um, defer to my colleague, um, Brian Donahoe, with DHS um, Benefit Implement and Support Services Division. He or the other Scott, Scott Nakasone, might be uh, a little bit more knowledgeable about the federal resources available. Okay, thank you. All right, go ahead. Senator Brian Donahoe here, and also um, I would invite Scott Nakasone to speak on behalf again as he is my policy guy. But part of the challenge is, as this is a state-funded program to create parity between those who are residents and those who are citizens, this oftentimes will be a benefit that is, in, that, that is used by folks who are residents and not citizens, and that's totally, um, you know, within the department, we're obliged to offer that. The federal requirements all require citizenship. I see. So that's one of the greater challenges we face. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Any other questions, committee members? Okay, seeing none, moving on to our last bill, SB 1233. Relaying to the vending facilities program allows persons with mental illness to participate in the vending facilities program 
limits vending facilities owned or operated by persons with mental health disorders to only those state or county public buildings not currently occupied by blind or visually handicapped vendors. Okay, first up, and I just want to remind um, testifiers, because we are on a dead stop at 4.30, that to please limit your testimony to two minutes. Okay, thank you. First up, Hawaii State Committee on Blind Vendors in opposition. Stan Young, are you there? Okay, next up, Department of Human Services with comments. Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair and members of the committee. This is Maureen from uh, Human Services, Department of Human Services, Maureen Bates from what, Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. Sorry. We stand on our testimony and are available for any questions or clarification needed. Thank you. Okay, next up, National Federation of the Blind of Hawaii in opposition. James Gashel? Uh, uh, yes, this, yes, right here. Um, just a minute, I'm gonna try to get my camera on here. Just. Oh, yes, Jim Gashel here, representing National Federation of the Blind of Hawaii. Um, we, we really are opposed to this bill. Now, it, in the House, it was HB 1112 and the House Committee deferred it. We note that the Department of Health, which supports it, has really changed their position since the time of the House bill a week ago and has offered an SD1 uh, to this bill, which they believe might not conflict with the blind vendor program, but it still would. The, the problem is under state law, current law, provides a priority for blind persons on state and county property. And I don't think SD1 has been um, meshed with that very well. You know, we just saw this, it just came out. I, I don't think negotiating something like this in legislative hearings is the way to consider this. You know, our, our hearts and, and willingness go out to people with mental illness who need a program and the state could provide a program. We just don't want it to um, disrupt and interfere with the blind vendor program. And we ask for your consideration and deferral of this while we have a chance between legislative sessions to work out a better um, result. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, Warren Nihipali Jr. in support. Warren. Not present, Senator. Okay, next up, um, Kiyoki Wright in support. Uh, good afternoon, Senator uh, Joyce and Brenda Ventura. My name is Kiyoki Wright, and I'm a member of the Polo Clubhouse, part of the Hawaii Club Clubhouse Coalition. I am su in support of uh, Senate Bill 1233 because I would like mental health consumers to be included. Um, we both have a disability and uh, I understand and have compassion for the blind vendors and I know it probably feels like we're taking away from them, but I have nothing but aloha for the blind vendors. Other than that, there are other reasons too in my written testimony and I uh, will be available for any question. Mahalo and aloha. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, Kelly Kogo in support. Kelly. Aloha, Sen Senator San Buenaventura and Senator Ihara and committee members. My name is Kelly Ann Kogo, and I'm a member of the Hale Oluea Clubhouse, part of the Clubhouse Advocacy Coalition. I encourage you to support SB 1233 as it will help people with mental illness to be self-employed. We admire the blind vendors' efforts in how they have a training program that a that helps them to be employed and to become a vendor themselves. We know that those in the blind vendors program have done a lot to keep their program successful. We hope that somehow we would take, we we could partner and learn what it would take for us with mental health disabilities to develop a program in DVR alongside of them. As mental health consumers, 
we can identify with someone with a disability, even if it is a different one from ours. We feel joy, happiness, frustration, some days more than others. I appreciate each person and I feel this is an opportunity for all of us to advocate together as one. We are taking consideration for recommendations that you had mentioned on February 11, and we are asking you to support SB 1233. Mahalo for your time. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, next up, Flora Patton in support. Flora, are you there? Yes, I am. Um, Aloha, uh, Senator um, San Ventura um, and the committee. This is my this is Bill SB one two three three related to the vending facility program. I am strongly in support. My name is Flora Patton. I go to White Power Clubhouse. I go to advocacy coalition meetings with all different clubhouse members. We would like to see the vendors expression bill to pass because us clubhouse members are willing to learn and to be um, successful and to have a good experience and to be good employees. I hope that we also fit in with everyone. Currently our group is looking for funding to help us members maintain our business. I would like to work together with blind vendors and maybe even be employed by them. I think, thank and believe we can share our own thoughts and commit, communicate with each other and agree to each other. I believe that us clubhouse members and blind vendors could get along as we can learn from them. Thank you very, thank you for meeting with our advocacy coalition. We appreciate you coming to our meeting. We are happy and appreciate your suggestion. Thank you very much for listening to my testimony. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Flora. Next up, Stephen Hanohano. Um, in support. Stephen, are you there? Yes, I do. Okay, Stephen, your turn. I don't know what to do, Sam, Sam, My name is Stephen Honohano, and I am a member from of Dummy Head Cup House, part of the Hawaii Cup House Coalition. I am to support of Bill Senate Bill 1233. Thank you, thank you so much for the meeting and your assistance in presenting advice and suggestions about the possibility of finding a unemployment or venue site. We know of any a empty venue site at Dummy Head help Caleb that is unified. This would not be taken away from by families and is not an example of how we can have a family site without taking away from a queer by family site. Maybe we can make a business relationship with my families and learn to work together. So please support FB1233 related to friendless fantasy. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Stefan. Okay, next. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Next, um, for, next up, Gail Stewart in support. Gail, are you there? Okay, moving on. Next up, um, Junior. Pamintuan. Junior, are you there? Okay, next up we have Derek Yasuda. Derek Yasuda, are you there? Okay, next up, Katie Kane. Kine. Katie, are you there? I am here, Aloha. Okay, Thank Katie. you, Chair. Hi, Katie. I Aloha. Thank you for hearing my testimony. I stand on my testimony in strong opposition to SB 1233. 
As my testimony states seven years ago, I worked for Department of um, Human Services in the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation as a program specialist and employment specialist, specifically for the blind and all other disabilities. There are a variety of programs in the division already established for other disabilities, and I believe that right now we need to focus on putting our blind vendors back to work. Most of them have been without work since the pandemic began, and the sites may not go back to full capacity to give them a living wage due to the fact there is so much telework. I believe that this bill would undermine the potential for any individual with a disability, but specifically our blind vendors and their options that they have. We have a large number of people currently in the program who are waiting to be trained and to fill a facility that may not exist in the future because of the quantity of telework that has started and may continue. Thank you so much for hearing my testimony today, and I appreciate you considering opposing this bill. Aloha. Okay, thank you, Katie. Okay. You're welcome, Ella. Next up, Virgil. Um, Virgil? I'm Gail Stewart. Okay, oh, Gail. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, Gail, why don't you go ahead? Thank You're in you support. very much. Good afternoon, Senator Joy San Bueno Ventura. My Thanks. name is Gail Stewart. I am with the Holly O'Honoru Clubhouse. As a member of the Hawaii Clubhouse Coalition, I feel I support Senate Bill 1233. I have mental illness and I have been in recovery for 18 years. I feel strongly that we be allowed to work in state buildings that the blind vendors feel is not a money-making business for them. We do not want to compete with the blind vendors, but want a chance, an opportunity to earn a living. Our clubhouses, I feel, will support us in our endeavors and ask us if we need their help. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, um, Gail. Next up. Virgil Stennett in opposition. Virgil, are you there? Yes, uh, let me turn on my video. Yeah. My name is Virgil Stennett and I've been a blind vendor here in the state since uh, 2003. And I'm in strong opposition to this because it really will go against what the whole program is for the blind vendors. And not just that, the Randolph Shepard money that is in the account, they wouldn't be able to touch it. Nobody can touch it. It belongs directly to the blind vendors and it's specific to it. There's uh, federal laws that indicate that also. And, you know, I feel for the mental illness. I think that the state needs to do better on creating uh, employment or unemployment programs for them. This would not work for them. It's just, there's so many regs and rules that we have to combat, you know, apply to, you know, you know, for the Fed side. And the funds that come to the program are specific, if they come to the Randolph Shepard, it's very specific for the program. So I don't think, uh, because even in the Randolph Shepard on the federal side, it's specific on blind and physically handi uh, visual ha handicapped. But um, to add mental illness, I think you guys will be destroying the Randolph Shepard program in Hawaii just by doing that piece. So I really encourage each and every one of you to consider opposing this measure because it's really, it's not the right place for it. Plus the pandemic has hurt a lot of blind vendors in our state where, and you know, it's just, there's so many blind vendors out of work right now, they're hurting. So. Again, thank you for hearing me and mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, Ronald Flormata in opposition. Ronald. Aloha, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Vice Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Ronald Flormata and I'm a blind vendor. I've been a blind vendor for the past 10 years. Before that, I worked as a sales for another blind vendor for six years 
before that I was unemployed. Uh, it's not for lack of experience or skill or education, but because I was blind. Uh, BBR or vocational rehab counselor helped me for five months. Without the Randall Shepherd, I don't think I would be able to land a job. In Hawaii, there are about 5,000 working age blind individuals, of which 70,000 are unemployed. Of the 30%, 70% are unemployed. Of those employed, 45 are licensed blind vendors. We do not have an unlimited number of facilities in Hawaii. To open up a vending facility it will take a lot of resources, money, manpower, time, equipment. And uh, we get some resources from the federal government if we change or amend the uh, Randall Shepard Act by including another group of disability, it will have a dire consequence on the vending program for the blind, specifically conceived, written for the blind. So in conclusion, please uh, do, do not, um, right on the Randall Shepherd vending program because we want we also want to help the mentally ill but not uh, in destroying the Randall Shepherd program for Hawaii. Mahalo. Okay, thank you so much, Ronald. Okay, next next and last one who has registered is Joel Cho in opposition. I thought I heard Joel there. Joel uh, yes, this is Joel. I'm trying to unmute my video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, um, this is Joel. I've been a blind vendor in this program for 21 years. I try not to use too many words to explain this, but what our program is, is a business enterprise program. It's not necessarily an employment program. Sorry. Um, we run our businesses as sole props S parks, et cetera. Um, as a business enterprise program, our agency has the responsibility to identify and maintain facilities that can provide the vendor a living. When building populations drop and public access becomes limited, the, excuse me, the, um, the business ends up not having enough of a customer base to maintain itself. The blind vendor, if he's lucky, or he or she is lucky, will be able to transfer to another facility. Sometimes they just have to leave the program or do something else or find a program on the mainland. I think it's a really bad idea to open up a vacant facility for another group that's already been proven that it cannot establish a living, not even minimum wage living. Um, I think it would be a tremendous waste of resources for another group to, to invest in something that has already proven that it could only set them for failure. Um, I know that the bill was introduced and sponsored with good intentions by good people but I think they need to take a much closer look at our program and what they're sending up um, members of the mentally ill community for. Um, that's all they really have to say on that, and I stand by my written testimony. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Nobody else having registered to testify on SB 1233. Those um, providing written testimony are, are Department of Health, in support and attach an SD1, Department of Human Services, Vocational Rehab Comments, Hale Aikane, the Kona Paradise Club in support, National Federation of the Blind, Tammy Robar in opposition, Hawaii Association of the Blind in opposition, Randolph Shepard Vendors of Hawaii in opposition, 
Hawaii Association of the Blind in opposition, and otherwise 17 individuals in support, 16 individuals in opposition. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1233? Questions, members? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna recess for decision making. Recess. Recalling the House Com Human Ser Senate Committee on Human Services, 3 p.m. calendar this Thursday, February 16th, for decision making. So for SB 192, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any questions or comments, committee members? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair votes aye. So, Human Services Committee members, we're voting on the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 192. Uh, unamended, Chair San Bueno Ventura? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Acasio? Aye. Senator Misa Lucha? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. The recommendations adopted. Okay, so for SB 534, um, we're going to take into account common cause and office of elections concerns, specifically the electronic authenticity problem. So we're going to remove um, on page three parts of line eight, all the way to part of page, to, uh, all the way to part of line 10. Lines 12 and 13 are removed to allow the office of elections to still require signatures if necessary and defect date, add a defect date to have further discussions. I note that this goes on to the judiciary where the prime introducer is also chair. So um, SD1, uh, vice chair for the vote. Okay, any, uh, re any reservations or objections to the chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 534 with amendments? No. Seeing none, I'll cast an aye vote for all members present. Okay, thank you very much. Recommendations adopted. Thank you very much. Okay, SB 537, um, relating to American Sign Language, seeing no problems with this. Um, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, we're voting on Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 537, unamended. Any reservations or objections to the Chair's recommendation? Seeing one, seeing none, the recommendations adopted. I'll for pass. Thank you very much. So for SB 538, Chair's recommendations also sees no problem with this and Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Vice Chair for the vote. Human Services Committee members, any reservations or objections to the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 538 unamended? Recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you very much. So for SB 597, Chair's recommendation is to pass uh, amended with an SD1, adopting Common Cause Hawaii's amendments, um, basically giving discretion to the campaigner to use the campaign funds for child care for any child under the age of 18, and, other, and otherwise broadening to include care of a candidate's other vital household dependents. Again, it gives discretion, doesn't require a campaigner to use said funds. Okay, any questions and comments? I should have raised it earlier. Yeah, what's well, your I comment? I prefer to, to leave the, the age blank because okay. off the top, 18 does sound, 18 year olds generally don't need child care. So if you blank out, maybe I'm not sure how you. And that was Senator Acacio's concern too. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. With the other amendment of blanking out the age, any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the, oh, we got add in a defect date. Um, any? For the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 537 with amendments, any reservations or objections? Seeing none, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we had a lot of discussion on SB 608. 
with the oral testimony of our director, Department of Taxation, saying that this will lose uh, um, the state about $150 million a year. Chair's memory of the last time this similar bill came about, that a lot of the general excise tax payments are actually being paid by tourists. And because we allow, we're allowing um, working class poor to be able to get a refund on their, on their general excise tax payments uh, through the tax system. Um, with, with those types of statements, Chair's recommendation is to defer this, SB 608. The Chair, could I make a comment? Chair, yes, please. Yeah, I, I, I would somehow would like to find a bill, or maybe there's one moving, that can devote a tiny piece of the cost of this bill to promote the uh, automatic refundable EITC and, and uh, uh, earn income tax credit uh, so that uh, those who are uh, struggling financially can actually, uh, we are guaranteeing, if they're a taxpayer, we're guaranteeing a floor of, of income for those who are working poor. And, um, but I, I think the, the, the participation level is, is not as high. And, so somehow, um, if we can, there's some way we can do that, that would, to me, be favorable. Okay, thank you so much, Senator Ihara. Um, it doesn't match our title, though. Okay. For the, so we're gonna defer SB 608. Okay, so for SB 886, Chair's recommendation is to pass this with an amendment. We're gonna remove lines 10 to 12 on page four. Um, basically, I, I want to, and, and also the preamble attacking the defense bar. I want to use this SB 886 to really be a proactive use of speedy trial by both prosecutors and the judiciary and not just the defense bar, okay? With those amendments, and I'm also gonna add in a defect date. Um, any questions, comments? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Uh, all members of the Human Services Committee are present. We're voting on the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 886 with amendments. Uh, any reservations or objections to the Chair's recommendation? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Ocasio. Any other reservations or objections? Otherwise, I'll cast uh, uh, an I vote for the other members as well. Um, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, as to SB 913, we're gonna um, amend this with an S, submit an SD1, blank out all of the dates, um, also blank out the violation amounts. I don't wanna punish the nonprofit entities um, unnecessarily. Limit the entities to a county of more than 750,000 in population allow the entities to remove all storage data devices. Again, limit all penalties on the entities or administrative only. So I'm gonna remove the in addition to language on page 11. Again, blanking out all penalties. Adopting the Hawaii Hope Department of Education and Department of Consumer and Commerce and Consumer Affairs Amendments and adding a defect date to promote further discussion. Any questions? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Members, we're voting on the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 913 with amendments. Any reservations or objections to the Chair's recommendation? Seeing none, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SB 1127, emergency appropriation, looks like it's necessary. Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Any reservation objections to the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 1127? Unamended. Recommend, seeing none, recommendations adopted. Thank you very much. Um, as for SB 1233, robust discussion on it. I note that the Department of Health's proposed amendment, which is basically to create a task force for vending facilities 
does not say anything about county and state facilities. And as such, um, Chair's recommendation is to pass with an SD1, adopting the Department of Health amendments and adding a defect date to promote further discussion. Any questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. We are voting on the Chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 1233 with amendments. Any reservations or objections to that recommendation? Reservation. The, uh, reservations for Senator Misa Lucha. Any other? Reserv reservations. Um, okay. Uh, any other? The recommendations adopted. I'll cast an aye vote for the other members. Uh, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks.